So in 1976, there was a bus accident that was so tragic that it absolutely changed the laws regarding air brake systems. And that did two things. One, it made your bus extremely more safe uh, as far as your brake systems. It's fail safe, so if something happens, it'll stop itself. The other side of it is it became super standardized and it made it so it was very easy to source parts and be able to fix your own braking systems. So today we're going to replace this part, which is the R12 relay valve for our rear brakes. Our last video you saw us do the D2 uh, governor, which governs uh, air pressure in the bus. This here is the valve that actuates the rear brakes. And just a quick disclaimer, I swear to you, we are not becoming a mechanicing channel. <laughs> we're still a bus life channel. This just happens to be exactly what we're doing this week or this month. Like I'm, I've lost track of how many mechanicing jobs we've done now. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can do this this way. I'm upside down, you guys aren't. That right there is the relay valve and right in the center of it there, let's see if I can zoom in on it upside down here. Right in the center, if you see that thing right there, right there, you see it's, a, it's actually a little rubber flap and it's bent down because air is always leaking out of it. So, that would suggest that the air valve's bad. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to replace this thing and hopefully that solves that problem. It seems pretty straightforward. We gotta take off all the hoses and everything coming into it. And then after that, we can just uh, replace the whole unit. It's so nicely packed in here now, but now we have to take everything out to get everything out. <laughs> <laughs> you have to unpack everything to get one thing? I would like to hope that in the future we don't have to assist the, the tools that often. <laughs> right. But it feels good to get these things out of the way. For sure. Well, the whole time we were building the bus, we didn't spend any time mechanicing on the bus. We hadn't even driven it yet, so we didn't even know what the issues were at that point. Yeah, that's true. So we had to just do these as we went along. Yeah. It's a hose that's screwed on. So how do I turn the hose that many times? It looks like it, it has a, a self-turning, uh, self-twisting thing. <clears throat> that's definitely tightening. Okay, that's not good. This side is different though. So we're gonna have to take this side off in order for this to all happen. Oh my God. There we go. Okay, there's one. Okay, just can't get to where I can see the part you're working on. Yeah, it's, I'm on top of it too, so huh. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I'm, just, I'm taking it off right now. Now I'm actually holding this thing. So here is the deal. These things actuate at different pressures. They can be set to different pressures to actuate. The one we bought is four PSI. What that means is that when I press on the brake pedal, underneath your brake pedal on a bus, you have that big paddle. Underneath is this this column that's about this big and it has a whole bunch of air ports coming off of it and one that comes into it. <clears throat> so when you push the brakes down, air can co comes out of all these different ports and head to different areas on the bus. On your bus, you have two braking systems. You have a front braking system and a back braking system. They're completely separate. It's built that way on purpose. So if one brake system fails, the other brake system is able to compensate and you can still break the bus, albeit not as well, but you can still stop and that's the key. So you want the front and the back brake systems, they both have something similar to this, to actuate at the same time. So you want your, at four PSI, 
this thing starts to allow air through. What the job of this thing is specifically is that the ports coming out of your brake pedal are very small. And so if you started to hit the brakes and you just fed the back brakes with that, it would take, there would be a, uh, a delay in braking because it took a long time for the air to get there. Instead, these smart guys thought, let's send the air from the brake pedal to here where it just moves the small thing that opens up big air. So the air tank for the rear brakes is right there by where I'm working. It goes right in here. When you push the brakes, it sends air pressure to here, which moves a valve that allows this air to come out of these down here to supply the brakes. It makes everything happen instantaneously, okay? So that's the purpose of this little dude right here and how this whole thing... Show me the bottom of it. There's four ports on gotcha. the bottom. This is where air comes in at, mm -hmm. and this is where air comes out at. In our case, one of these is blocked. One of these is going to this unknown thing right here. Not sure what it is. And then these two go to the actual brake pods. I think they call them pods. And then they blocked off the fourth one. So we're going to transfer all this stuff over here and even clean them up a little bit so they look nicer. And then, then we'll move on with the replacing the whole thing again. Oh, there it is. Allen wrenches are so good and so bad at the same time. I mean, uh, crescent, <laughs> crescent wrenches. wrenches yeah. I know. So handy that you can adjust the sides, but such a pain in the ass that they adjust themselves. Yeah, they do. <laughs> oh, I put on the wrong one. I'm dumb. Oh, you put it on the wrong end? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Which would have been... A nightmare? In place, yes. Because this is a compression fitting. This side is not. That's national pipe thread, NPT. Let's see if we can get one more out of this without using a vise. I saw it breaking loose. One did, but not uh, the one I was working on. Dang it. I mean, they both got to come off, so. <laughs> so it was at least progress. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, not the one I was aiming for here. <laughs> oh well, collateral damage. <laughs> collateral progress. Collateral progress would be a better term. <laughs> Just think, we got to put these all on the other one. Oh man. Yeah. Man, it's starting to look like Franken part. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. MacGyver vice. The foot vice. Unorthodox to say the least. Yeah. Oh, but it does give me the leverage I'm looking for. Whoa! Did it break? Yeah. No. No? It's just that. You grab me the biggest crescent wrench over there? Sure. But it did it. Got it. Giant, giant filter wrench. I had to Mike Guy for this one. Oh. Yep. <laughs> it worked though. All right, hand me that thing. Well, uh, the part? Yeah, and then hand me a half inch Franken wrench. part. Half inch <laughs> wrench. This bolt is not exactly a half inch. Give me a 13 millimeter. 13 and a half are almost exactly the same size. 13th is just slightly bigger, hence why it fit. Uh huh. Uh, all right, now we're putting hoses on. Oh my gosh, you're already totally reconnecting everything? Yep. That was fast all of a sudden. It was kind of fast. Hose. All done? I think so. We just gotta turn her on and 
See if it does all the things. <laughs> <laughs> Hope that it does all the things. All right, you clear a path for me over here. Mm -hmm. uh, old people crawling here. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, fire up. Get like 10 seconds of over there. Yeah? First time I started the bus. Nuh-uh. I'm a big girl now. No. Nope. No hair leaking. Then we fixed it. Awesome! Oh, that's just one less hair leak in the bus. There's still a couple more, I think. There's one more for sure. The other one's is iffy. You can hear it right here. It's up oh, front. I do hear that. But I'm not sure what it is. Great! Another early job. I'm stuck. Um, I don't know what the piece is, so that's the next thing. All right, I think it's working. We'll find out because we're just gonna let it idle itself to life. Whoa! Why did it go off again? No, listen. Something's still blowing air. Darn it. I find it. Still right here. You hear it? Yeah, totally. But I don't know what that thing is so or what it's up to. So, the rear air brake is not leaking any longer. There used to be a constant hiss back here when it turned off. The only air leak we have now is this strange thing that's on top of this tank right here that I need to, uh, I don't know what it is. So we have to identify this weird thing and then we're gonna source it and then we're gonna order it and then we're gonna replace it. And that'll be another thing that stops hissing. But the good news is, is if we look at the va or the uh, pressure gauges up here, they're both holding solid at 125. Before it would just hiss and hiss and hiss until there was no pressure left, but now it's holding pressure. So what that's saying right there is that tank is the main supply tank. Whatever this thing is on top, we got to replace it because it's just constantly hissing and blasting air. We had to wait for a few new parts to arrive in the mail, so today we're getting back to our air brakes project. In the past, we've like totally complained about this, and it's it's the buzzer sound that the bus makes when it's warming up. And because we had to wait so long in the past for our, our, our air pressure to come up, we had to listen to that for a really long time. So we decided to replace that buzzer with this buzzer right here, which is a more pleasant sound. It actually sounds like walking into a Circle K, to be honest with you. So, but we're gonna replace those buzzers because one of them actually went bad and that was our overheating buzzer. So I'm gonna replace both of them right now. And then we're gonna replace the other new part that's part, we yes. have all kinds of stuff to do today. Yes, we have one last part on our air brake system, which is the pressure protector valve. And I'll talk about what that does in a little bit. These things right here, are our buzzers. It's got positive coming in right here. This is the positive. It comes over and goes to this buzzer and this buzzer as the positive link. What does that tell me? That tells me that these things are switched on by grounding these right here, which completes a complete circuit. So these are actually the switches to the wires. And this right here is just powering this thing until it gets a connection to ground. Why is that important? Because that's how these things work. So I have two of these right here and I'm gonna mount them to this thing because it's just this plate. Mount them right here and here. And then, then we'll tie in these uh, wires to the, uh, to the appropriate connection here. So this whole thing will work properly. Two ding-dongers. <laughs> yep. So first things first is this is our positive 
right here. So I'm going to strip it. And then I'm going to put one of these fancy connectors here on it. Beauty. That's one. We got to bring power to both of these, and therefore I need two. But I'm putting putting uh, these uh, blade connectors on it, so I can if one of these goes bad, I can just change it out real quick. It's so cool that you know how to do all this crazy stuff. <laughs> Comes in handy. Okay, so now I got that. Now what we have left are the signals in this case. We're going to call them a signal. Anytime you have something that's being switched on and off, you could call it a signal because it's it's being switched on and off. <laughs> <laughs> it's a signal. Signal on, signal off. Normally, like in every circuit that you generally run into, they're switching on and off the power side, the part coming from the battery. In this case, the part coming from the battery is always here and they're switching on and off the ground. So they're oh. tying it so it's not getting grounded until such time as there's a signal present. Gotcha. I'm glad you know these things as well. It is handy. It took a second. You just got I had to measure it. But since it was powering both buzzers, but only one buzzer was coming on, that would suggest that they're switching the ground. In this case, the blue and the black tie together because this one here, you can have them turned on and then all the time and then if you just ground the blue one it'll make noise but if you just ground if you tie the ground and the blue one together it does the same thing like that and we're going to hook that to one of the signals right here like that and that's one and then we need to put another one on the positive side here. Oops, I hooked that up to the wrong place already. Whoops. This is the ground. This is the positive. There we go. Are you positive? I am now. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I know how these work is because I read the directions. <laughs> it came a little piece of paper that told me which one were how it needed to be hooked up and how it needed to be hooked up to work. Okay, so you're not just this amazing genius. You just know how to follow directions. On the buzzer side of things, <laughs> the bus side of things, the bus side of things, I actually, actually had diagnosed that. He's like, no, I am an amazing genius. What? I am amazing. <laughs> All right, you want to test it? Sure, you want me to turn on the Go key? Go turn on the key. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Moment of truth. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome to Circle K. One of them turned off. So when it gets about 60 pounds, it should shut off. There it is. Excellent. You did something right. Oh shit. What? I just built put pressure in the brakes. <laughs> and now you have to release it? I have to release it before we can. This, I find out is the pressure protection valve. And this is what's leaking underneath our bus. It's the last component I know of that's blasting air out of it. And it's not supposed to ever blast air out of it. Therefore, something's wrong with it. And its purpose, in our bus, we have a front air brake system, a rear air brake system, and then we have an auxiliary air system. And the auxiliary air system is for like um, when you have the air seats and things like that. And so we don't have an air seat, but we still have the auxiliary air system because we took the air seat out. And our air tool connection for compressor connection um, is off the auxiliary tank. What this does is if there's a failure on the auxiliary tank, um, it could just drain your whole system. This prevents that. What this does is 
as the air pressure is building up, it waits till it's at like 85 PSI before it allows air to go into the auxiliary side. So in the event that there is a catastrophic failure, air will be going through it until it reaches 85 and then it'll stop. But you'll still have enough to break and this will turn off that airflow out. So you'll maintain. Now I'm not exactly sure what the PSI rating on this is because it just didn't say but they're usually over 65 to 85 to 100 PSI for these right here. So our auxiliary tank won't get air until the bus is up at a certain level. So we're gonna replace the one that we have because it's broke and put this bad boy in. And then we'll turn it on and there'll be no hissing noises, hopefully. Life under the bus is just straight up without discomfort. Ow, throw my head. And really hard things that bonk. Ow, that was my head again. Jeez, baby, you haven't even started yet. <laughs> no, I've hit my head twice. <laughs> so this is the thing and it's air's blasting out of this side right here. So I just need to take this off and re, uh, re-thread some goop on it. Or what is it? That tape, Teflon tape. Does this thing go on top of that tank in front of your face? Yeah. That's what makes it so difficult to get this on. That's what makes it so difficult to film. Yeah, oh yeah, that's horrible. Holy crap, you have the tiniest space to work in in there. That's terrible. Now, thankfully, there was enough room to get this thing on. Yeah, and I can actually see it going on. Oh, good. Through like a narrow crack. <laughs> By the way, this is my daughter Dana and her boyfriend Michael. I know you didn't, oh. <laughs> you didn't think they actually existed because they've always been at work every time we had the camera, but they actually do. They're real people. Okay, but you got this thing all done? This is it. All we gotta do now is turn it on. Make sure there's no hissing noises. Let's turn it on and see if there's hissing noises or explosions. Which is it? Oh wait, let's set a timer. Well, it didn't start from zero, so it didn't matter. Oh really? Oh, it is building for nothing at the bottom here. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, you're hissing. What's that front one up here? It's leaking. It's something else. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh oh, it was just a simple little thing. Thank goodness. All right. Well, now. Okay. We should be good. That solved got that stuck issue. Open when I was draining the tank. Yeah, wait, that was just weird. Yeah. Okay, I'm so glad that was like we're not gonna require another new part. Hell yeah. So it fills up at about 90 psi. It fills up our auxiliary. So that part we just put in, the air pressure coming up paused at about 80, 85 pounds, 85 psi. And so it paused because air that was normally just going everywhere suddenly started filling up that tank at 85 PSI. And so everything paused for that tank to get up. Oh, I see. But the air pressure is still climbing right now at idle and we're about to pass 100 PSI. So now we would actually pass an A dot brake test. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you should have zipped up in the front. Right? <laughs> oh, the dirt made my stomach look fat. <laughs> All right, so we just passed 125 at idle and it's still climbing, which is a good sign that we don't have any leaks anymore. Now we're just waiting for it to unload right around 130 pounds or so. Wait a second. And there it is. So basically at idle, we climbed all the way up to the unloading pressure, meaning that we now will pass a DOT inspection for brakes if we need to. So that is like really exciting for me. Yeah, really I'm excited exciting. too. Like you just buttoned up every little issue, every little leak. Our whole air brake system is working perfectly now. Yeah, and scary, scarily, like we didn't know enough about air brakes when we started and we were operating a fairly unsafe system. Without knowing it. Without even knowing it. Yeah. Like we didn't know what the pressure should be. We didn't know like 
where where things should ha should or shouldn't happen. Yeah. We never saw certain pressures yeah. that initiated things in this bus that we that we should have seen. Yeah, and we didn't know it because everything seemed to be working. I mean, the brakes yep. were working, everything was functioning, so we didn't know. Yeah, we just didn't know. So now, the last thing we need to do now is shut off the engine and by DOT standards, you go out and you empty all of your air tanks. So every that, time. Every time, because right now, at pressure, if somebody were to bump into this right here, our air brakes would come off. The only thing that has the brakes on is the back brakes when you set the parking brake, which is what this is, there's a spring that pushes and pushes on the brakes. So your parking brakes are essentially a spring and it's a safety feature. If you lose all pressure, the uh, pressure of the bus actually presses that spring out of the way and then your brakes would operate by your foot. But if you lost all pressure in the bus, then that spring would be released and it would cause your, your brakes to be applied. be applied. And then you would start you know, decelerating and you could pull off the road or whatever you needed to do. So that's why you have that. However, when you're parked, if someone were to come up here and do something and bump this and put this in, our brakes would come off right now because we have enough pressure to operate to the brakes. operate the system. Yeah, so we need to drain our brakes so that doesn't uh, happen. And that's safer for when we're parked. That's right. Well, we're just learning how to be safe all of a sudden. I'm so we're proud of us. Real safe people now. Here at Bus and Bus, safety is our game, except for goggles. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look under here, we have these things right here. This is our auxiliary tank. And that lets air out of the whole system just by this, the auxiliary well, this tank? Well, this is just one of the tanks. Oh, we have to do all of them individually. I think so, yeah. So we got that one, and then we got that one. It also releases any uh, water that might be present in the tank and blasts it out as well. So that's another reason to make it something you want to do. This is our front air tank for our front brakes right here. There should be another tank somewhere. I don't know where it is yet. In the back? Somewhere. Okay, here's the rear air brakes. Whoa! And that's it. That's pretty cool. And now we have uh, protected our bus from rolling on an incident. Right, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was very satisfying though, I have to say. Very satisfying to uh, uh, get that fixed. That was a huge learning experience, which was so worth it uh -huh. to learn how to uh, create or, or fix and know how they work and what each piece does in particular. I think it's super important to know not only like if something's broken and what it is, but why it is so you can understand its purpose. Well, you know a lot more about it now than I when sure you do. first started. So. The thing is, is, I think at this point now that <clears throat> I understand all the main components and uh, all the components that are the absolutes in an air brake system. Because there's all sorts of other things that the bus can use air for, but they're not part of the braking system. They might be for your air leveling seat or you know something else. Other but, things. Yeah, or just opening like a like a uh, a vent or something. Okay, you know, simple gotcha. Things. But in this case, it was knowing the main parts of your brakes is probably the most important thing you should learn so that you know if something goes wrong what that part is and if uh and how to fix it so i'm going to put a link at the bottom for the some of the videos i watched because they were really good they're boring it's like slideshow hell it's really bad but they are so informative about what's in a brake system why the brake system exists and stuff like that so we'll put it there for you guys all right you guys thanks for bearing with us through yet another mechanicing video yeah we're in the rebuild series <laughs> right <laughs> thank you guys for watching so much because we love having you guys along your comments are appreciated too we read every comment so thank you guys hit that subscribe button right over here all you gearheads out there give us a like if you like this that's video. right <laughs> or tell me what i did wrong right you know, yeah if, I, if, if there's could, something we're missing if i completely messed up the brakes 
Go ahead and we tell me. We know that would happen anyway. I our, would actually, our commenters really keep us on our toes. They do. They do. They're, they keep us <laughs> and honest. And are very helpful. They very are. Helpful. We get a lot of helpful comments. Yes. Yeah, sometimes we, like too late after we've done a project. Yeah. And we listen to them. So <laughs> thank you guys so much. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that little bell if you want to get alerted. And uh, give us a like. And we'll see you guys next, next week. Thursday. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Bye, you guys. <laughs>